For eight years, my family has suffered and my career has suffered. Oprah Winfrey, you know what you need to do and stop hiding. People are beginning to see you for who you are. Oh, I lost everything. All my gigs gone. Everything gone. Lee Daniels and I had a conversation and he offered me the role of Cookie. I got a call back from him because I hadn't heard and that's when he said, my mind, you've been blackballed. If we don't want segregation, then we need to get rid of channels like BET. Shut up! There shouldn't be a Black History Month. You know, we're Americans, period. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly. It's who I am. Okay, then go, go to the bushes. Stand-up comedian Monique, or as our fans know her as Nikki from the Parkers, says she's been blackballed by Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, and Tyler Perry. Lee Daniels and I had a conversation, and he offered me the role of Cookie. I got a call back from him because I hadn't heard, and that's when he said, my mind, you've been blackballed. We were on the campaign, and she was making unreasonable demands. You gotta play ball. This is not just show. It's show business. Even though Monique became famous for the TV show running from 1999 until 2004, she made a name for herself through 2009's Precious. She was even nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. When director Lee Daniels asked Monique to do a press tour, she refused. Her reason was simple. If you want me to promote the movie, you need to pay me to do it. This obviously caused a rift between the actress and the director. After their unofficial fight, Monique accused Lee Daniels of telling other studio execs that she was quote unquote difficult to work with. To vent her frustration, Monique took to the stage and lumped Lee, Tyler, and Oprah together in her accusation. It's no wonder her TV and movie roles have since dried up. To get her career back on track, Monique went on the Steve Harvey show and they had a brutally honest conversation about her problems with Hollywood. Steve even promised to help a sister out. You Monique, you my girl. I love you like a sister. He said he would arrange a meeting with Tyler Perry and Oprah so they could all put this negativity behind them and let Monique's talent shine in the spotlight once more. I cannot wait to help my people out. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> Actress Stacey Dash is a classic example of why you don't mix politics with movies. With her breakthrough role in Clueless from 1995, Stacey Loretta Dash was set for a life in showbiz. Appearing and starring in movies, her meteoric rise in Hollywood came crashing down when she started sharing her conservative views a little too much. Hollywood pushes a liberal agenda to the rest of the country. And whether we like it or not, Hollywood dictates the culture of the country. You also call out Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. We think there's nothing wrong with actors being open about their political views, but Stacey Dash was never humble. She went so far as to call for the end of Black History Month. There shouldn't be a Black History Month. You know, we're Americans, period. That's it. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly. Her outrageous statements and hateful comments about the transgender community. People in the transgender community would then say, it is who I am and I don't choose to be one way or another. It's who I am. Okay, then go, go to the bushes. Landed her on the Hollywood blacklist. She was even fired from the Fox network. Hello there. Oh, God. You've caught us in an intimate <laughs> moment. I'm like, wait. Smoking hot and relatively young when he starred in Fox's Empire, Jesse Smollett was beginning to make a name for himself in Hollywood. His character, Jamal Lyon, the gay musician on the show, helped him come out as gay on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. The NAACP awarded him with Outstanding New Artist. But in 2019, Smollett's popularity was his downfall. On January 29, 2019, Jussie claimed he was attacked and then verbally abused with homophobic and racial slurs. But after an investigation, a grand jury found him guilty of filing a false police report. In 2022, Jussie was sentenced to 150 days in jail and had to pay $150,000 in fines. Fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBT community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. Shit! I've been cut already? Almost everyone in Hollywood knows the movies this 61-year-old actor has played. His most popular, of course, was the Blade trilogy. But his movie career turned out to be his downfall. You see, from 1999 until 2004, Snipes earned $37 million. The taxes he paid on the money was zero. He even sent $11.3 million worth of fraudulent forms. When the IRS finally caught up with Snipes, he didn't even try to deny the tax evasion charges. 
Snipes outright stated that the government had no right to tax him. Well, guess the IRS didn't share his opinion when they gave him three years in prison. Sentence. Prosecutors had pressed for that maximum sentence of three years because Snipes did not file his taxes for three years. Just with all the fans. And then I felt like this wasn't, you know, yeah. it's not appropriate, right? No, I feel uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable, right? right? You feel uncomfortable. And I'm the, I'm the fan. <laughs> We could easily end this segment just by saying Will Smith, but let's dive a little deeper into the relationship Will Smith has with Hollywood right now. The Fresh Prince practically ended his Hollywood career. After the Oscar slap, Will Smith was banned from the Academy. All of the projects he was working on either got canceled, paused, or postponed. But then again, Smith did all of this to protect his wife's dignity, right? Well, that would have been a noble sacrifice if Will and Jada hadn't split in 2016. Yeah, you can't see me, brother. Mm -mm. You can't even see me. Put on a runner suit like this here. 60 year old Texan actor Isaiah Washington was one of the rare Hollywood veterans. He had many popular movie and TV roles under his belt, but the most popular had to be Dr. Preston Burke in Grey's Anatomy. Even with all his experience and popularity, his homophobic slur about one of his co workers landed Washington in pretty hot waters. After the show won a Golden Globe, Isaiah doubled down. Seriously? No, I did not call Tiara. <laughs> Never happened. And used the slur once again. And that was pretty much the end of his Hollywood movie career. You know what we call guys like you where I'm from? No, what? Pretenders. Famous for his roles in Cadillac Records and The Losers, as well as being a regular on ABC Scandal, Columbus Short ended his successful career with a knockout. In 2014, at a family dinner with his in-laws, Short got into a heated argument. After the violent outburst and a running punch on one of his in-laws, Columbus Short was forced to leave Scandal because of his real-life scandal. Is that your plan? Yep, that's about it. You want to know what I say to that? Huh? You want to ah! know what I'm about? Eddie Winslow from Family Matters got himself in a pickle because of his real-life incidents. In the past, the 47-year-old Darius McCrary has portrayed characters in Big Shots, Transformers, and even The Young and the Restless. However, when problems began to surface about his three divorces and backed-up child support, Darius went to jail in 2015. Even though he paid the full $5,500 he owed less than two hours after being jailed, his relationship with Hollywood has never been the same. Currently, he only gets roles in small budget movies and minor roles in TV shows. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Take off all my clothes. Halle Berry is an outstanding actress, but even the best have a few stinkers. For Halle Berry, the first major flop was the second X-Men movie. Her portrayal of Catwoman in the first X-Men movie was outstanding. Everyone loved the young actress, and they decided to make a second one. But boy, were they in for a surprise. Instead of paying homage to Catwoman, her portrayal was an insult to all of DC. Even though she did X-Men number three, her movie opportunities were never the same. The big dramatic meaty roles were very rare. It took Halle Berry a long time to get accustomed to this way of life. Currently, you can see her in Kingsman, The Golden Circle. I say we are now alive, seeing through eyes that have been denied us since being born into the darkness of bondage. Stand with us. That your other captive brothers and sisters are also no freedom. Stand that our children, for generations to come, will know that with the supernatural power of God, we straightened our back against the works of the evil one. Actor, screenwriter, producer, and director Nate Parker could do it all, but all of it was taken from him in an instant. You see, the actor made his directorial debut with a movie called The Birth of a Nation. It broke records for the highest paid Sundance Film Festival movie when they bought the distribution rights off Parker for $17.5 million. What was supposed to be the first of many successes turned out to be a massive failure. Rape allegations about the 43-year-old actor surfaced and practically no one showed up to see the movie. CeeLo, do you at all regret turning down the song Happy? Um, no, 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 not regret. If you had your time again, would you choose to release it yourself? Um, <laughs> CeeLo is more of a singer than he is an actor, but his music drew people in, his personality retained him, and so he got his own TV show. As his songs were peaking at number two on the Billboard chart and his popularity on The Voice rose, so did his ego. CeeLo Green posted some inappropriate comments about homophobia and rape. 
And just like that, in less than 280 characters, Green lost his contract with The Voice, as well as his TV show. Feel with Steve Harvey, baby. Yeah, you know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? I know my mama watching this. <laughs> Young, talented, and tenacious, Jason Mitchell is most popular for playing Easy E in Straight Out of Compton. After receiving a Screen Actors Guild Award for the movie, his career shot up, and he was even part of Kong Skull Island. However, his rise to stardom was like a bottle rocket, quick and unimpressive. Mitchell is a good actor, but when allegations of sexual misconduct surfaced online, Hollywood immediately placed him on the blacklist. One of the actresses who worked with Mitchell admitted to feeling unsafe around him. To make matters worse, in 2020, the cops found marijuana and an AK-47 inside his SUV. And uh, we go, we sit right up front, the lights go down, and one opening that after another goes on. Then Kevin takes the stage, crowd goes nuts. Thousands of people. I was furious. Dave Chappelle left Hollywood and went to Africa when they offered him $50 million. Despite the big bag of cash, Chappelle felt like Comedy Central was putting too much pressure on him. Eventually, he made a comeback after around 10 years and has released several Netflix specials since then. In one of them, he made some jokes about the transgender community, so activists started attacking the comedian and calling him insensitive. Chappelle tried reasoning with the trans community, but it's not going well. After the first scandal with Comedy Central, and now this, Dave Chappelle is going back to Hollywood. Although, to be fair, we don't think that's what he intended in the first place. If you'd like to take a trip down memory lane and learn more about the secret lives of black stars, subscribe to our channel.